Google is getting a new campus. Google's application to build a new campus has been approved by the Mountain View City Council. Google's new campus, Charleston East, will be located next to the current Googleplex in Mountain View, California. The new campus is set to feature a 595,000 square foot, two-level office building with a basement. The roof will be installed with solar panels. The irregularly shaped clear stories are designed to bring direct, indirect, and diffused natural light into the building. The glass is equipped with automated shading devices that allow localized daylighting control. The ground floor of the building is open to the public with a pedestrian pathway cutting through the building. Visitors can enter the building to dine and shop in the same restaurants and shops as Google employees. The new campus will also feature a plaza for the public to relax and enjoy performances. The second floor of the building will be used as office space for Google employees. The new building reportedly will hold up to 2,700 staff members. It's expected to be completed in late 2019. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Here's some more concepts for infrastructure in the future. Apple has grown so big it needs a new home. Building work on Apple's future headquarters is continuing in Cupertino, California, where it looks like a giant UFO has just landed. Apple's new Campus 2 headquarters is expected to open in early 2017. The main building is a ring-shaped, four-storied structure that looks like a huge spaceship. The site covers 176 acres. That's about the size of 100 soccer fields. At over 1,500 feet, the main building is greater in diameter than the Empire State Building is tall and wider than the Pentagon. More than 3,000 sheets of curved glass cover the main building, which is a perfect circle. The site will be completely powered by renewable energy, including solar power and biofuels. Around 80% of the site is green space, complete with jogging and cycling trails. Some 13,000 Apple employees will work at the new headquarters, which has seven different cafes. A thousand bicycles will be available for staff to use to get around the campus, which will be planted with 7,000 trees. The campus will also have a 1,000-seat auditorium, a 100,000-square-foot fitness center, and 300,000 square feet of research and development facilities. Parking garages above and below ground can accommodate 14,000 vehicles, while a visitor center offers views over the entire campus. The total cost to build the Apple Campus 2 is estimated to be $5 billion. That figure is equal to around 2% of the company's total cash reserves. The Apple Campus 2 will be the world's fifth most expensive building, and quite possibly the world's coolest office. First Hyperloop One system coming to the United Arab Emirates. Hyperloop One has signed an agreement with Dubai's Roads and Transport Authority to build the world's first Hyperloop system. Hyperloop One's system will connect Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Its stations, called Hyperportals, will be located in the city centers. Passengers will travel in pods, which come in four different configurations. Cargo, coach, meeting, and lounge. The pods will pick up passengers at gates and travel autonomously to an underground level. There, they will be loaded inside a transporter capsule. Each transporter capsule will carry four pods. The capsules will be propelled by compressed air using magnetic levitation, which eliminates friction, inside a tube kept at a near vacuum to eliminate air resistance. They can travel at a speed of up to 1,200 kilometers per hour. The Hyperloop will reduce what's now a two-hour car trip between Abu Dhabi and Dubai to just 12 minutes. Hyperloop One said passengers inside the pods will not feel any discomfort, despite the extreme speeds. The capsules will stop at the hyperportal upon arrival, while the autonomous pods can either stop at the gates or continue beyond the hyperportal to take passengers to their destinations in the city.
Hyperloop One said in a press release that the infrastructure does not have to work with the pods alone. It could also work with other self-driving vehicles. Shipping containers become floating dorms for students. A Copenhagen startup has created an innovative student dormitory that floats on water. The containers are placed on top of a concrete pontoon base and stacked in two levels to create 12 dorm rooms. Each room is a studio setting with bedroom and living room areas. The space in the middle is an open air courtyard and the top level features a small lawn and solar panels. The walls are insulated with aerogel. The temperatures inside the units are controlled by hydro source heating. A heat exchange system draws upon the thermal mass of seawater to cool and warm the dorms. The basement of the pontoon features more facilities, such as storage zones and an automated laundry room. The company claims the structure would not be impacted by flooding, as they will rise and fall along with the sea currents. The rent for one room would be roughly 600 US dollars per month, which is a bargain in Copenhagen. Urban Rigor has already received over 3,000 applications from students who are interested in living on water. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Design for another major London skyscraper revealed. Plans have been unveiled for the construction of a skyscraper in the city of London, which would match the height of the city's current tallest building. A skyscraper to be named One Undershaft will become one of the tallest buildings in the historic center known as the City of London, which is north of the River Thames. The 73-floor structure is intended to provide office space. It will host a public viewing gallery and restaurant at the top of the building and a public space at the bottom. The building faces London's current tallest building, the Shard, across the river. Developers say the building will rise to the same height as the Shard, at 309.6 meters. The official completion date of the building has not yet been announced. However, plans are to put the building into use within the next decade.